community and some folks who have come from outside the community in support of waste. Uh, water grants after this for clean uh, air, or, you know, for clean energy, excuse me. That related to wood being dirtier than coal or worse than coal. And so you asked me to look at where that came from. And in fact, uh, that was originally, language was originally in a study called the Biomass Sustainability and Carbon Policy Study that was uh, published by the Manomet uh, Society uh, on June of 2010. And that uh, is it, the Manomet Center of Conservation Science. And that study immediately drew some significant criticism to the tune that uh, on the 21st of June of 2010, Manomet issued the following statement, and I'm just going to summarize some points from that. It says, uh, one commonly used press line has been that wood is worse than coal for greenhouse gas emissions or for the environment. This is an inaccurate interpretation of our findings. And then it goes on to address the following key points. It says, first, the study addresses only the carbon cycle implications of biomass harvested from actively managed natural forests. The study did not analyze woody biomass from other sources, for example, biomass plantations, land clearing, tree work, and landscaping waste or construction waste. Secondly, the study did not analyze the impacts of non-greenhouse gas pollutants emitted from energy generation facilities e.g. particulate matter, what we call NOx, SOx, uh, and other uh, hazardous air pollutants such as mercury. Emissions of these pollutants vary considerably between wood and fossil fuel energy systems and are an important consideration in determining the relative merit of biomass fuels. Third, the study clearly states that it focuses on the forest and energy situations in Massachusetts analysis, particularly the carbon cycle implications, cannot be readily applied to states where the biophysical characteristics of forest, forest management practices, and energy sector differ significantly from Massachusetts. Makes a fourth point that the report further states that these uh, portions will be different in other situations or states, and that conclusions about the impacts on the atmosphere will necessarily be different. Each state or situation or even specific biomass facility would need to do its own analysis to properly evaluate the greenhouse gas cost of benefits. And then finally, the study makes no recommendation regarding the development of specific policies to address greenhouse gas emissions and biomass. And then it concludes by this uh, discussion on carbon debt, because we've had some folks come into the community and talk about release of carbon into the atmosphere and it would take literally hundreds of years to pay back that carbon debt. Um, the report calls the excess emissions from burning biomass for energy the carbon debt. Because trees can grow back, this debt can be paid off and the carbon dividend can be achieved as greenhouse gas levels are reduced to levels lower than they would have been if only fossil fuels had been used. The length of time it takes to pay down the debt and realize dividends depends on four factors. The life cycle of the wood, the type of energy that will be generated, the type of fuel being displaced, and the management of these forests. Unless these factors have been assessed, as they have in our report from Massachusetts, it is not possible to estimate the time it will take to pay off the debt or the magnitude of the carbon dividend making it difficult to draw conclusions about greenhouse gas implications of using wood. So I just wanted to provide that information to you, and that's available for you in the packet. And that was a statement from Manomet to try to correct uh, some of the things that were in the original statement.